A very good morning guys this is Avinash and today we will discuss about the thermodynamics of the reactions that take place in the blast furnace. So in the last two lectures we have discussed the overview of the blast furnace iron making. Today we will see the thermodynamics of the reactions and the first is the combustion of coke. Yes we know that this is one of the principal reactions that is taking place in the blast furnace so today let's discuss about the combustion of coke okay so, uh, coke is nothing but it is one of the raw material which is the principal source of carbon yes co coke is nothing but carbon itself so it is the principal source and also it is the principal reducing agent yes it is the principal source of carbon as well as it is the principal reducing agent as we already saw the reactions that is taking place the indirect reduction is nothing but the reduction of iron ore by using the carbon monoxide gas so this carbon monoxide will come from the coke okay that is nothing but the combustion of coke the coke gets reacted with the oxygen combusts and then it forms CO Carbon combusts with oxygen in the preheated air blast at your temperatures at of about 1900 to 2000 degrees Celsius. This is nothing but the maximum temperature in the blast furnace. Yes, we have discussed already the temperature profiles. You can find it out in the overview video. So the hot air of this temperature comes and combusts the coke to form carbon monoxide as well as sometimes carbon dioxide also co and co2 today we'll discuss what will be the dominant gas that is formed by this combustion okay we already discussed that in the top gas there is co co2 and there is n2 also coming from air so this is important because we have to find out the composition of the top gas these three are nothing but the composition or the constituents that are present in the top gas of the blast furnace so the amount of co and the amount of co2 are to be calculated and this hot gas whatever is the co or co2 this gas travels from the tear zone to upwards yes that is why we call it counter current interaction so by this counter current interaction between the these hot gases and the bed of solid the solids gets heated up and the, it is melted and we also saw the melting zone starts in the Bosch or in the lower stack so in the different regions of blast furnace we have discussed that so the main reactions now we have uh, we are discussing about the reactions so that is nothing but carbon plus oxygen it gives rise to CO2 and the other one is carbon plus half O2 gives rise to CO okay so today the main aim of our video is to look at why CO we say that in react reduction reactions also we saw CO is the gas that is reducing the iron oxide or Fe2O3 why is it happening why CO2 is not forming and why CO is forming we look in today's video okay so if we consider the delta G of these two equations if you consider uh, for example the first equation is C plus O2 gives rise to CO for this the delta G will be equal to this is the equation of Oh, Joule per mole. In the similar way for the other reaction that is the formation of sorry this is for CO2 and for the formation of CO the delta G equation is Joule per mole okay so if you observe generally we know that delta G is nothing but delta H minus T into delta S yeah so from this equation if we compare these both these values are nothing but the delta H okay so if you see 
if you observe the delta h of both these reactions the heat that is evolved as there is minus sign minus delta h delta h is negative in the sense it is an exothermic reaction and if you see the values here more amount of heat is getting liberated in this reaction in co2 formation as compared to the co formation so it may be noted that the combustion of carbon into co2 releases much more heat than its conversion into co so from thermal efficiency point of view if you see from these delta h values the formation of co2 is more preferable the formation of co2 is obviously more preferable from the values of delta h in thermal efficiency point of view but the product is essentially co the product that is formed essentially is co and today we'll discuss why if you observe the whole equation and the temperature at which the combustion takes place if you take the whole equation into the consideration the temperature of combustion will be about 1900 to 2000 degrees celsius correct so at this temperature if you put in the temperature terms this term is dominating the enthalpy or the delta h term and uh, delta g of this reaction is more negative than this thing yeah delta g is more negative in the sense it is more stable the gibbs free energy is less is nothing but the term or the what you can call the compound with gibbs free energy less is more stable at that particular temperature so because of the temperature at which the combustion is taking place co is the stable gas that is formed okay the one more thing that is important is from where this oxygen is coming if you see in this reaction the oxygen o2 or half o2 it is coming only from the hot air gas yeah preheated hot air gas that we fed up into the glass furnace using the tubers so always remember the oxygen content coming from the hot air is completely utilized in conversion of coke to co okay so this is an important uh, this is an important aspect of the combustion of coke we can see the same thing using the ellingham diagram what is an ellingham diagram ellingham diagram is nothing but the plot between delta g and temperature if you see this this is delta g and this is temperature yes the only line which is parallel to the temperature axis is nothing but the conversion of carbon to carbon dioxide whereas if you see a line which is continuously sloping down the slope is decreasing or you can say the negative slope it is nothing but the formation of carbon monoxide okay so this temperature will be about 17 degrees celsius so after 17 degrees celsius you can see the delta g is pretty less of co than co2 that is the reason why at higher temperature we are talking about some 2000 degrees celsius so obviously this has less delta g less delta g in the sense it is more stable so that is why co is predominantly formed so this is the reason why carbon dioxide will not be forming in the blast furnace it may be formed but the maximum or the more stable gas that is formed in the blast furnace by the combustion of coke is co carbon monoxide okay this is about the carbon thermodynamics of carbon oxygen system there is one more important reaction that is nothing but the formation of co2 if at all there is some co2 form it reacts with the coke bed carbon from the coke and it also produces 2co
okay so the co2 whichever is formed it again reacts with the coke coke bed as the co2 goes upwards in the blast furnace reacts with the next coke bed and forms carbon monoxide this also we'll discuss about how this reaction is useful or whether it is not feasible so this reaction is called as Baudard reaction or it is also called as gasification reaction okay so remember this reaction we'll talk about this in the modification whether is it feasible or not so this reaction is also important to be considered this is also called as solution loss reaction and uh, we'll discuss in the coming lectures why we call it a solution loss reaction and what is the loss what is the drawback of this reaction okay so all this is regarding the thermodynamics of carbon reaction or combustion of coke now we'll move on to the iron system that is nothing but the feo system the thermodynamics of iron oxide system so usually we have discussed in the reaction there are intermediate products that are formed so the main thing if you see the reactions i'll again uh, discuss the reactions in this video also the feo system contains these type of oxides that is magnetite hematite and one more thing is there which is the most important thing and most stable oxide in the blast furnace it is called as wustite wustite is nothing but fexo it is a non stoichiometric non stoichiometric compound it is a non stoichiometric compound and it is also oxygen deficient it is also oxygen deficient here if you see the x x in the formula ranges from about 0.835 to 0.945 okay these are the three different types of iron oxides that are present so we have discussed already the reactions and now we'll see the order of reactions i think uh, we have already discussed if you have not watched please watch the overview reactions in which i mean overview video in which i have discussed about all the reactions that are taking place in the blast furnace so usually hematite ore is used this on reaction with co gives rise to fe3o4 this will form wustite this will form the liquid iron okay this reaction is most important because maximum of this around 75% of oxygen 75% of oxygen from the ore from the ore is reduced in this reaction okay so this is very important and one more thing we have discussed that this reaction the reduction of iron will be dominant in the stack region yes so by the time the from the top to bottom it is coming from about 200 to 2000 degree celsius fe2o3 is getting converted into fex and this reaction takes place in the lower stack region yes when the temperature is about 1200 degree celsius this reaction takes place and liquid iron is getting started okay this is about the reduction of iron ores i think uh, no need to write the uh, reactions please refer my previous video in order to find out the reactions of these iron ores okay so here we have already discussed this part we have already discussed about the reduction by carbon dioxide sorry reduction by co that is carbon monoxide as well as reduction by carbon that is solid coke that is two types of reactions we have discussed one is indirect reduction the other is direct reduction 
in the indirect reduction it is nothing but a solid is getting reacted with a gas solid is the or gas is co here it is direct is nothing but solid plus solid solid is an ore and here solid is nothing but again coke the carbon from the coke okay here it will be about 66 percent of the reduction takes place in the direct and about 33 percent takes place in the direct so the ratio we will be 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 for indirect is to direct okay so we have already discussed all these things but here we will discuss why the direct reduction is getting or is taking place less as compared to the indirect reduction okay if you see general in if you see in general aspect also any reaction between a solid and a gas is faster than a reaction between two solids correct why i'll explain now if you take two solid particles okay in which uh, there is some reaction taking place the reaction interface or the surface area of the reaction is too low you see here the surface area is very less whereas if you see it indirect a gas can flow and it can form a uniform layer throughout throughout the solid particle and the reaction area if you see the surface area between the both it is way more than the surface area that is in the direct reduction okay so that is the reason why indirect reduction is more dominant in the blast furnace okay so this is about the iron and oxygen system so the gas solid reactions are much faster than the reactions between two solids just now we have discussed this the solid burden materials whatever is the solid burden materials that we put in what are they that is nothing but iron ore cinder coke fluxes like limestone all these must be porous okay all these must be porous such that if these are if there are some porosities here the, the gas can flow through these pores also so that the reaction area will increase again okay that means the gas can be easily flown into the interior of the material it can go and travel into the pores as they are gases they can easily penetrate by diffusion and the reaction will be more dominant okay whereas here the reaction between solid and solid it is just confined to the surface only the external surface which it is interacting that's all so that is the reason why the direct reduction that is nothing but FeO plus coke yes that is nothing but the direct reduction that we are talking about this is low because of this reason fine so this is about the thermodynamics or this is about the iron oxygen system yes the next one if you see there are there is some hydrogen that is present also okay now we will discuss about this reaction of hydrogen in the tier region some steam some steam is injected to control the temperature if the temperature is increasing on to control that some steam is also injected nowadays steam is not injected they are using pci pulverized coal injection we will discuss this later on from this also there are some hydrogen atoms coming into the blast furnace so because of this steam or because of either steam or either some natural gases natural gas or oils so these are injected into the tears everything natural gas uh, oils everything are hydrocarbons and this hydrocarbon dissociates and hydrogen is formed okay so also pci is a development of this so on addition of all these things there are some hydrocarbons produced inside the blast furnace and these hydrocarbons and everything will be the sources of hydrogen 
sources of hydrogen because these hydrocarbons are very unstable at that such high temperature so they readily decompose into carbon and hydrogen so if you consider the equation for steam h2 is nothing but steam a simple equation take a source of uh, hydrogen is a steam it reacts with the coke and it forms h2 plus co okay so there are two gases these are formed here so we have already discussed in the previous video hydrogen can also react with the ore and this hydrogen can also reduce the iron ore yes so that is why this hydrogen concentration is also important so at the tuer tuer zone itself or the tuer region itself because of the high temperature the steam or the h2o is almost converted into the hydrogen gas hydrogen gas is present or converted directly in the tuer zone itself tuer region or the combustion region itself okay now this may react with co2 that is formed and it again forms h2o plus co yeah all our gases and this is called as water gas reaction this reaction between hydrogen hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas it is known as water gas reaction and if you see the delta h value of this it is 32 into 10 cube joule per mole that means if you see this much amount of heat is required for this reaction to takes place yes so as it is an endothermic reaction you see here the delta h value is positive so because of this endothermic reaction what happens the temperature or you can say the raceway temperature why because this reaction takes place in the raceway itself the raceway temperature decreases the raceway temperature is decreases or it is reduced because of this reaction or you can say because of the source of hydrogen because of the steam or because of the hydrocarbons that are produced so because of these the raceway temperature is decreased and one more thing we have said that the reaction hydrogen can reduce the iron oxide so iron oxide feo plus h2 forms fe plus h2o here also h2 is formed so it is an endothermic reaction if you see here the value will be value of delta g will be this joule per mole so if you see delta h is also positive so it is also an endothermic reaction so that is why this reaction is not that feasible but if there is any hydrogen present in the blast furnace it also reacts or it also reduces the iron oxide into iron but only thing is it takes up the heat that is produced in the blast furnace so therefore what are the major reactions that we have discussed in the blast furnace first one is reduction of iron ore reduction of ore by co or h2 that means the hydrogen or gas i mean hydrogen is a gas and co is also a gas it is nothing but the indirect reduction next one is direct reduction that means reduction of ore from or reduction of ore by coke or you can say carbon and the third one is from where these are coming the from where this co or h2 is coming that is nothing but the gasification reaction gasification reaction from where co2 is converted into co the waste co2 gas if at all there is some co2 produced it cannot reduce the iron ore so it reduces or it reacts with further carbon and produces co this is also an important reaction so these are the principal reactions that are taking place in the blast furnace and we have discussed two third of the reduction will takes place on indirect reduction 
and one third will be from direct reduction so this is all about the different reactions and its thermodynamics okay so now we will so now we will discuss now we will discuss about the mechanism of this reduction mechanism of reduction how this reduction is taking place okay so generally what happens is the reactant gas there are these are the different steps the first one is transfer of gas onto the solid particles solid particles are nothing but again the ore yeah solid surface the transfer of re reactant gases those are nothing but co or co uh, sorry co or h2 these gases are transferred onto the solid surface around the solid particle okay next what happens is the inward diffusion of these gases take place inward diffusion is nothing but the gases on the surface penetrate into the solid into the pores of the solid which happens by the diffusion the third one is the chemical reactions that take place the chemical reactions that takes place on the interaction between the gas and the solid next the outward diffusion of the product gases there will be some product gases formed right for example on reaction of fe2 3 when it reacts with co co2 is formed so that co2 must come out of the particle okay so this outward diffusion takes place and again this is tra and transfer of it and this gas is transferred into the bulk gas from the surface to the bulk so these are the different steps these are the different steps that take place in the reduction how the reduction is taking place okay so if you see the same thing in a diagram the reduction in a diagram if you see this is an FeO particle if this is an FeO solid particle there will be a reaction zone here I'll draw and then explain okay if you see here this is the solid FeO surface this is the reaction zone where the reaction takes place this is nothing but the porous layer porous layer in the sense the porous layer surrounded by the solid surface and this the gas transfers from this porous layer into the reaction zone this is the gas boundary layer the gas comes transfers and forms a layer around the solid particle this is the porous layer and this is the reaction reaction zone okay so if you see the gases will go inward yeah what are these gases that go inward the reactant gases that may be carbon monoxide or hydrogen and similarly after the reaction there will be some diffusion of the outer gases or the product gases these are nothing but either co2 or h2o okay so this is nothing but the mechanism of the reduction so this is how the reaction takes place this is how the different reactions takes place in the blast furnace and the mechanism between the gas solid reaction now we will see the composition of the hot metal 
what may be the composition of the hot metal so obviously we know there will be many impurities that are present we already discussed about that so the composition will be in weight percentage generally expressed in terms of weight percentage okay so obvious one is carbon will be about 3.5 to 4.3 percentage the next one is silicon which comes from the ash and also from the ore it will be about 0.2 to 1.5 sulfur will be about 0.02 to 0.05% phosphorus will be very less about 0.1 to 0.2 manganese will be about 0.2 to 0.1.5 this may be the final composition of the hot metal that is produced in the blast furnace so generally this composition varies depending upon the composition of raw material used and uh, generally the iron making parameters like the temperature solubilities and the practice also iron making practice also these compositions may vary okay so we'll discuss how these are removed all these impurities are removed in steel making reduced to even lesser content in the steel making so we will discuss in the all these things in steel making so thank you guys